we're working here on this Barking Chihuahua Cafe, and this is where, in Thesis 2 demo, and this is where we finished on Wednesday when we customized it. And if we're here on Thesis Home, if we come over here to, well, we can see this in two places. We can see it in Custom CSS, which is in the Skin menu. Whoops, I guess I have to log in. Okay, so you can see it here in custom CSS. This is the code we wrote on Wednesday to make that set of columns and everything. So it shows up here, and you, you see another copy of it, or a, yeah, you see it again, not another copy, but you see it again over here in CSS. So this is the skin CSS, and the other one is custom CSS. All right, this is custom CSS, and this is skin, whoops, this is skin CSS. So when we talk about pasting something in custom CSS or talk about pasting it in skin CSS, we are talking about those two things, okay? Now, this code editor is based on code editing system called Code Mirror. In fact, there's a site, codemirror.com. Oh, I'm sorry, codebeer.net. And there is a nice little user reference here explaining how it's used and that kind of stuff. So if you want a little bit more add-on, I mean, if you want more information about this and information about customizing it for your own use, there's quite a bit of information here. And this is designed for you, the professional the professional web designer, web developer, it's very specifically intended for professionals, right? It's just not, this is not a toy. And in any case, it has syntax highlighting. You can see that syntax highlighting in place, right? Where it can tell what the selector is and it can tell what the, what the property is because the selector is in blue, the property is in gray. Stuff it doesn't recognize is in black. And so it doesn't, I think it deliberately doesn't recognize stuff like, you know, WebKit and Moz browser specific codes because it's based on CSS3 standards, which also doesn't recognize those things. So you can see the selector and operator colors. You can see the properties and their values. And when the value is text-based and correct, it's green. When it's text-based and incorrect, notice what happened. It went to gray. The whole thing went off, right? Because I, I went from border box to border boss. So it does tell you, you know, whether or not you've made a mistake. It does help you in any case see whether or not you've made a mistake. WP con or WP content, I'm sorry, W content. These are um, these are variables, and all your variables are going to be in red. And this is something special that Chris has added to the code code mirror version here. And then you also have numbers, and the numbers are in this darker red color. All right, so this is what that code, I mean, these colors here help you see this light gray is, a, is the comment and that kind of stuff. This colors help you see whether or not you're making a mistake. All right, take out that. Well, I guess that doesn't really help you. Well, it doesn't even matter in there, pardon me. If we take out this semicolon you see this color this line height property changes color right because it's not it's identifying an error right the stuff if the stuff is not properly colored that means there's an error someplace generally above it or below it somewhere on the line you've got an error in here right in any case one of the things it's totally cool because of that. Something else is, is that it uses automatic indentation. So, you know, you can continue typing like this and say padding bottom, whoops. All 
right? And it will continue indenting for you. And this indentation system, of course, is critical to making your code readable. So you may be used to the method that Chris and, in fact, I have borrowed from Chris used to sort of stretch the code out and to reduce the number of line breaks and reduce the number of spaces and stuff like that. And you do that in order to sort of, sort of pseudo minimize your CSS file. However, that does not aid in the readability of a CSS file. And so my suggestion to you is, is that in your own CSS, you make sure that you have one property per line and that they are all properly, they are all properly indented. Oh, and the other thing is that the custom CSS has this cool ability to enter variables. So if we go back over here to custom CSS, and if you were here last week, you saw that, you know, we can come over here to say our color. Well, that's the other thing that we didn't see in the other side, which is colors when they're hexadecimal colors are shown in this magenta purpley color and URLs are shown in this purplish color here. Okay. So anyway, we could come along like this and then click this button here and choose a different color right so let's just say we use color 2 and all you have to do is click this and it's going to change the variable as you click the variable it's changing the variable right and you can control Z control Z control Z until you get back it's got a what seems to be a relatively unlimited range of control Z's. Now, now that I say that you've got control Z's, I want to draw you back again to my to my resources page because I have created a keyboard shortcut cheat sheet for you. I have a PC version and I have a Mac version. And we're going to just take a look at this PC version here right now because this code editor actually has a whole bunch of very useful tools in it. I'm going to draw your attention here to one very important tool, I think, which is the Shift tab. Now, let's just say that you use very bad coding practice and and your stuff is really all over the place. So it's essentially impossible to read, right? Well, what you can do with your mouse inserted in there is hit shift tab. Pardon me, you have to select it. So control A to select everything and then hit shift tab and it will automatically fix all of that those tab problems. Ooh, it didn't fix that one. I guess that's, let's see, let's try that again. Shift tab. Nope, it needed a little bit of help from me here, I guess. No, it didn't fix this one either. Okay, so there is a kind, it'll fix it if, I guess if it can figure out what the right answer is. So if you've got a whole bunch of these things where there not where there's no indentation, if you select them and shift tab, they'll automatically take the correct border, I mean the the correct indentation. This is also the case down here under the, the like in the media queries, right? We've we have have an additional indentation for the media query. And to the extent that we break that indentation, to that extent, it'll fix it. See? And it'll fix it all for an entire block of choices, which is totally cool. If you screw up while you're typing your stuff in and somehow, you know, break the indentation, you can use, you can also say select a block of this stuff to, to 
further indent if you choose. And again, if we take this and shift tab, it'll all go back to the right space. Okay. So that's one tool, this automatic indentation fix tool. Clearly it has some limitations, but not too many. The other one that I really like is the find, which is control F and the replace all, which is shift control R. We're going to use that here later on this morning. So anyway, this keyboard shortcuts either for the PC or for the Mac has the ability to significantly increase your productivity as you're working in this code editor. And to the extent that you want to do other stuff with the code editor, you can look at ways to customize it because there's all kinds of things you can do in this code editor to customize it if you so choose. So that's a conversation for another day, except just to say that it is possible. Okay, so that's the new Thesis 2.1 code editor.